All right. I am going to attempt to use the pen tool. I've started this shape um, to make a new tail instead of using the one that I turned off, which was two ellipses overlapping. Right. Just to show you how you do have full kind of customized control. So I first make it out of straight lines as simply as possible. That helps me make it perfectly symmetrical and, and centered. Then I'm going to double click in order to turn it into a curve. And then without holding down shift so that it's equal on both sides, I'm going to stretch that curve out so it's the curve I want. And then I'm going to double click here, turn that to a curve. But the difference here is I'm going to, I can do it on both sides. I'm going to hold down command and bring that anchor point back on top. So it's actually straight on this side. Oops. And curved on the other. Right. And then I'm going to hold down command and pull out the other curve on the other side to get the exact curve I want. And like I said, it takes some practice. Going to get all of these clicks exactly on the anchor points. But that looks like the shape I want. So I'm going to change it from being blue to being solid black. And I'm going to turn off its border. And now I have two options. So if I turn off the sketch behind, I think that looks pretty good. And I'm comparing it to this one. Yet I think I like the custom one that's more pointed. But it doesn't mean I have to get rid of, I don't have to delete these paths, I just need to have them turned off. Okay, so we're, we're making good progress. It's cleaning up my sketch, it looks more professional. Now I just need the little crown water edge here. Now this is honestly the trickiest thing because this is a lot of pen tool use. And this is the trickiest thing in the pen tool. It's changing from curves to straights, curves to straights. So instead of layering up a bunch of shapes, I'm going to try to just draw it all throughout. So let's see if I can do it. I've locked everything else. Now I'm going to go to the pen tool. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit so I have more, more space on screen to work. Zoom in. I really want to see that grid. All right, so I'm going to start here. Then I'm going to go to here. To find the average to there, to there. I'm doing it all with straights first, to there. And because I want this to be symmetrical, I'm just going to go straight up the middle. Instead of trying to match it side to side, I'm just going to go straight up the middle. up to this line, keep it at the same height. And the guides help me. Remember if I need to move it, I can. Let me stay in line with the points I've already put down. I need to add to it, I click on it first, and then I add to it. And I want to line up with the pre-existing one and go up to the top. All right, so now, how do I round it out? I double click on it first so I can see all the anchors. 
And then I already have some handles I can use to round out. It's kind of the shortcut for it. But instead, I'm going to do it the hands-on way and just double-click, turn them into curves. And then using Command, I'm going to alter each individual curve. And this is what Raceland was talking about. It's hard to get exactly like the curve to look smooth if you don't use the shape tool. But it is possible. You just have to really control it. And then I'm going to go here. And notice I'm keeping that one straight. I'm not double clicking that. So I'm going to go every other one so that you have a curve going into a straight. A curve going into a straight curve going into a straight. A curve going into a straight. And that's why it's important to be able to control each side. A curve going into a straight, but here I want to hold down command. I want to make this side of it straight. And then adjust this curve. Same thing, holding down Command, adjust this to be straight by drawing it back in, and then adjust this curve separately. Feels a little narrow, but we'll see. All right. Now remember, to move an anchor point, like if I wanted to move that one back in a little bit, you double click, and then you just click on the anchor point and you move it. So you can alter anything you've made in Illustrator. Okay, now I have them all lined up in the bottom. I have them all lined up at the top. This I don't seem to have quite lined up. So I'm going to move this one down a little. It's great to be able to alter these and line them up after the fact. That's why Illustrator is so helpful to designers. So that you have all this control after the fact. Okay, so now I've got that shape. Let's go ahead and turn off the border. Turn on the, the black solid color. At 100%. And then I'm going to duplicate it. Right click, duplicate, then I want to flip it horizontal. And I want to move that over. And line them up. Let's see how that looks. Yeah. So if I can compare that to my sketch, I now have a vector version of my sketch. And I think it can be tweaked a little still. Just because it matches your sketch doesn't mean it's, it's perfect. If I zoom in and I look at this curve, oops. To get better at using the trackpad to move around. There we go. All right. Ah. <laughs> oh no, I might have lost that work. Problem with browser based. Ah, oh, good. I remembered. Okay. So if I zoom in, let's be more careful. I'll use spacebar to move around instead of the two fingers on my trackpad. You can see how this curve going to the straight just isn't that smooth, right? So what can I do? If I double click, 
double click, whoops, single click rather, hold down command. This is where I can massage that a little bit on both sides. Of the curve. Sometimes those curves get quite long, so I might have to zoom out to get to it. Hold down command. And to get it so it doesn't look like a point, you want the curve to the Bezier handles to be flat. Even though they're different lengths. So if I use shift, that will straighten them out even though they can be different lengths. And then that might be a better half. So I can delete this one. I can duplicate this one. Flip it. Move it. Get it nice and centered. Stretch it a tiny bit this way. Stretch this one just a. Yeah, I think that's good. And let's check how they come together. Come on. We want to make sure that they just line up really well. I'm going to line them up perfectly, and then I just need to work on the curve. Good. So, double click, click, hold down command. I want this curve to be wider. Same thing here. I'm going to widen that out a little bit. And if I really zoom in, you often have to do this with, with vector files. Find the little bumps. I'm just going to move that anchor just ever so slightly up. Remember, everything is editable. That's the problem with more and more complex shapes. You get these little artifacts. All right, but for this program, that is pretty strong. That looks good. So what I'm going to do is now select, by holding down Shift, all of the different shapes and paths that created this image. So notice the ones that were turned off I didn't select. Right? So they're all selected. Now I'm going to say export as an SVG, then download. And unfortunately, it doesn't give me the chance to title it. So I'm going to go into my downloads and title it from there. Open up my downloads. So if you if you uh, select it and then save it and turn the others off, it won't show you the things you don't want it to show, right? And so this, I can now move to my desktop. It's going to show up under images, and I can title it. Black. So you want to move that saved SVG file into your assignment folder. And that is the vector that we can we can then use later.